right when it seems like the show is about to get into some really cool stuff. The show goes farther down the rabbit hole than ever before, and what is without a doubt the show's dumbest episode yet. Don't change the channel! Hey guys, it's Kevin and Marty for Iron Fist Season 1, Episode 9, The Mistress of All Agonies, and oh my god, I mean, this seems to be a pattern with Iron Fist, that we have a really good episode that seems like the show's really promising and shows a lot of potential, followed by a really dumb episode, you know, the only time that hasn't happened is when it's been 4 and 5, both those episodes were really consistently good, um, other than that, though, it's been, like, mediocre episode, really good episode, mediocre episode, really good episode. This, however, might have broken that streak because, like I said, those episodes have been mediocre. There hasn't been, like, an absolutely terrible episode until now. This is the first episode of Iron Fist that, in my opinion, is genuinely bad. This episode was ridiculous. It really didn't make much sense whatsoever, and just was really cartoony, honestly, like, this episode felt like a comic book, but in all the wrong ways, it, it really did, I mean, this felt more like something you'd see in, like, a Saturday morning cartoon, even though there was a lot of, like, brutal violence in here, this might have one of the dumbest deaths I've seen in a TV show ever, honestly, it might have, um, I just... I didn't hate this episode, but it was just so dumb, and every time the show just shows a shred of potential, it does something to waste it, and let's just get into this episode, because honestly, this was one of the most ridiculous hours of TV I've seen in a very long time, but we're just gonna get into it right now. We start off, and right off the bat, we get to some really silly stuff. At the park pond, we see Harold is very much alive, he's emerging from the water, realizes that he's alive, he stands up, pulls the knife out of his side, crawls ashore and smiles. So immediately, you know, there, there's no point in Ward um, killing him. There's just no point whatsoever. This whole thing kind of throws a wrench into all of that, and it makes it seem like it didn't matter at all. Like, I don't even know why Harold was killed in the first place, but whatever. This episode is not exactly the most logical thing in the world, uh, but back in the States, Danny takes Gao to the dojo, and Gao wonders why they should be enemies, and Danny says he's not turning Gao into the police until he finds out what he wants to know, and again, this setup was good. It's where they take the storyline that it gets really dumb, because he asks about Wendell and the hand, and Gao says that he has more pressing concerns, and when she refuses to talk, Danny throws a punch at her face, but stops just short of hitting her, and Claire and Colleen then take Danny off privately, and Danny says he needs to know if Wendell was involved with the hand, and Colleen points out that no Knowing won't really change how Danny feels about him and doesn't want Danny to do something that can't be undone. Claire suggests that Danny get sodium penthol from a Rand's lab, doze Gao, and get her to tell them everything Danny wants to know. So Danny asks Colleen what she thinks of the ideas and she says that it's best than torture and uh, Gao listening chuckles, and the problem with this plot line is that, yes, there is some good stuff in here, it's just extremely convenient and predictable. Pretty much everything you think that could happen, and any time it seems like a character's in danger, something happens in this episode um, to make their situation a lot better, and to make things a lot, you know, easier for them, and it's just way too convenient, it really is, I mean, there is no stakes in this episode, that's the thing, there really was no stakes for me throughout this, and again, it, it, while there was some good stuff in there, it just, it, it really didn't amount to much of anything, in my opinion, so... We then see Harold, he walks down the street and finds some children playing with a hydrant, and look, I've liked David Wenham up to this point, but he just took things way too far in this episode. I get it that he's trying to make, you know, he's trying to um, make this good, but even his acting here can't save how dumb this really is. He lets the water wash off the mud on him, one boy's mother comes out, Harold says he has a son, he starts laughing, he just walks off towards, uh, Rand Enterprises, so, yeah, again, these scenes don't make any sense, he's laughing about his son for every reason, even though his son is the one who killed him, why is he laughing about this? What's funny about what's going on? I have no idea, it doesn't make any sense right now, and the whole episode is just completely completely overthrown by ridiculous scenes like this. So on the street, Joy calls Ward, gets his voicemail, says she discovered that Harold brought the building a week before she he died, and uh, 
basically, you know, she's now kind of getting to the bottom of things herself. Danny walks up out of nowhere. I don't know where he came from, but Joy tells him that the board fired them. She points out that everything fell apart when Danny showed up, and that's mostly his fault. Oh, wow, Joy. Okay, well, a few episodes ago, you were defending him. You were on his side. I just, I don't get this anymore. Where the hell are they going with this character? One second, she's like, oh, no, you're right, Danny. And then the next second, she's like, no, you're not right at all. I just can't figure out this character is so all over over the place and look I was starting to like Joy I really was but it's episodes like this that really do demonstrate how mixed up of a character she really is I mean they can't figure out where they want to go with her do they want her to be someone who is firmly on Danny's side or do they, or do they want her to be the complete opposite I just I can't figure it out and Joy tells Danny that Ward has disappeared, tells him about the building, and when she said, I'm like, oh, finally, an episode without Ward. Well, that's what I thought was going to happen, but she told him about the building. Danny claims that he doesn't, but Joy figures that he's lying. Danny tells her to stay away from the building before he goes, and I just don't care. I, I really don't care about her not believing him with the building, but Harold walks through the park. He comes to a hot dog vehicle, he, a uh, hot dog vendor. He reaches in the hot water scale and scalds his hand, coughs up mud, walks on. I guess you could say he's doing this to make sure that he's alive, but he already knew that he was alive. So what was the point of doing this? Why is he putting his hand into hot water? I mean, what do you think is going to happen? I just, I didn't understand this at all. None of this made sense to me at any level, but Claire then gives Gal some water. Gal points out that regret hovers over everything that Claire does. She knows that Claire fraternizes with people with gifts, hoping that would make some special rub off on her, but it hasn't. Gal tells Claire that she has failed all of them in different ways, and she shouldn't drag Danny down with her. And when the old woman implies that Claire's mother is in danger, Claire starts to threaten her. I'm like, oh, finally, some mention of Claire's mother. And again, they're just completely um just missing so many opportunities when it comes to Claire's character you could have seen um you know you, you could have seen Claire's mother you could have heard more about her past but they don't connect things at all it just it feels so disconnected it feels like Claire's just thrown in there and Colleen then comes in suggests that Claire take a break Gal then greets Colleen, says she doesn't look well, and Danny arrives at Rand. He breaks into a lab. He gets the sodium penthol, and Sandy Ann then comes in, says that he's not supposed to be there. Danny asks for her help, and then she reluctantly agrees. You know, again, completely convenient, not any reason whatsoever. She just kind of agrees for it, and, uh, you know, we don't know why. But Gal then tells Colleen that her grandfather was right to train her the way that he did. Colleen understands the way the world works. She says if Colleen lets her go, then she will leave Colleen alone. And Gal warns that they are coming and tells Colleen to leave before it's too late because Danny will never belong to her. And Colleen then chuckles at her side, clutches at her side, calls to Claire, and Claire realizes that she's actually sick. And the second she's like, I'm like, oh, give me a break. You know someone is going to save her in some way. Like, the second we realize that Colleen is sick, I'm like, something's gonna save her. There's no way they're gonna kill off Colleen. So... Harold then arrives at Rand. He tries to work out who he is and why the company doesn't have his name on it. And again, a better show could have done this in a way where, you know, he's kind of rationalizing things. And, you know, a lot of time has passed since Harold is gone and things like that. I totally understand that. But the show just handles it in such a ridiculous way. You know, he's talking to himself the whole episode and he's saying all these weird things and he finally remembers who he is and Wendell's birthday, which is the code to the security keypad. And as he goes in, he bumps into a man who turns out to be Davos. Yes, Davos shows up in this episode and it's basically just as out of place everything else. Look, let's put it this way. The writer said that they intended to put Davos in the second season. I, I don't know why he's here. I really don't. What is the point of having Davos in the season at all? If you were going to put him in the second season, why not put him in the second season? Why just throw everything out in the first season? I get they didn't know if they were going to be renewed, but why just throw everything out there? Save some things for the second season. I don't understand why Davos is in this season. There's no reason to be here and... Once again, he feels basically as out of place as everything else in the show has. So first, Harold goes to Ward's office. He finds someone else's items there. He discovers that Joy's office is empty as well. He wonders what happened, figures that he needs to go home. He calls Kyle to pick him up, and Kyle explains that the board voted Joy, Ward, and Danny out. And Harold asks Kyle what he would do if he learned he was immortal. Kyle says he eat ice cream two meals a day, and... Uh, Again, we'll get to that scene a little bit, because I have a lot to say about that certain ice cream scene. But Davos goes over to a food truck near Rand. He gets in. The cook grabs a wrench. He tells him to get out and attacks when Davos doesn't move. He knocks the cook out, ties him up, takes out a copy of Forbes with Danny's picture on the cover.
cover. He folds up a piece of tinfoil into a throwing star, throws into the wall above the cook's head, and I just... I didn't understand the point of the scene. Like, what, why is he hurting the cook now? What, what has the cook done to Danny? You know, g give the cook a break here. The cook has not done anything bad to Danny. I did not understand why Davos was, um, knocking out this cook. I did not understand the point of that at all. Yeah, I understand, obviously, he's trying to find Danny, but what is the point of him abusing this cook? I mean, come on, just give the guy a break. He hasn't done anything, but... Ward arrives at the penthouse, he checks his voicemail, when he enters the apartment he finds Harold there, and Harold says that when Ward was born he hoped that he would have the best pieces of him, he explains that the hand treatment let him come back from death, and again, it just, it makes this feel so pointless, what was the point of Ward killing him if he was just gonna come back anyway, I, I don't understand it, and especially the way this scene plays out is completely the wrong way to go, Harold asks if he's a monster, Ward says that he definitely is, and his father comes over with the knife, he drops it, you know that he wants to kill Ward, but for some reason, he doesn't kill him. He starts crying and tells Ward that he's sorry for destroying everything that ever mattered to him, and he begs Ward to forgive him, and again, it's just so unconvincing. Nothing about this makes me feel like, oh yeah, this is definitely the way to go with this character. Because of the way they portray this character later, it doesn't seem like they want us to have any remorse for this character, so I don't understand where they're going with him here. Here, it seems like, oh, we're supposed to feel bad for Harold, and we're supposed to, you know, see that clearly he feels bad for what he did to Ward, but then a scene comes in a little bit later and completely tarnishes that, which, again, we're gonna get into in a little bit, but Danny returns to the dojo, Colleen's in her bed, she says that she has the flu, tells Danny to get Gal before he runs out of time, Claire prepares to inject Gal with the drug, Gal tells Danny that he's going to face something he's completely unprepared for, Claire injects the drug, and Danny then questions Gal, and Gal says that she manipulated Danny's other, um, into getting to Wendell, who wouldn't have anything to do with the hand, but Harold was glad to join forces of them. She starts to say that what happened with Wendell uh, did when he found out and seemingly passes out. Again, the show doesn't get it. Show me this. Don't tell me it. Show me it. I, I want to see this. I think it'd be more interesting for them to do that. And the show has yet to do that. They haven't done a villain backstory episode. They haven't done, um, you know, the hero, you know, origin story type episode. We have yet to see those things on the show. And that's, again, the thing that really is holding this show back. At this point in Luke Cage, Daredevil, and Jessica Jones, we knew pretty much all of the villains' motivations. We knew everything that they were doing. Here, it seems like the show is just so confused. It doesn't know who the villain is. It doesn't know what they want to do. And because of this, it's just such a clusterfuck. It really is. And that's what this entire, this, this episode really does show how much of a clusterfuck this show really is. And there's really no other way to put it. And, uh, again, I get it that the show's trying to get us into more, uh, info with Wendell and, and Harold and connecting it to them, but it just feels like the show, they should have shown this. They should not have told us directly what's going on. You know, this is all, this is the show and not tell situation. That's the thing the show doesn't know how to do, and I don't know if they'll ever be able to learn that lesson. So Colleen then comes in and collapses. They realize that when she was cut in China, she was poisoned, because why not? And Gao's completely fine. She's with withstood interrogation for centuries, and she tells them that Colleen's time has come. Colleen tells her to call someone who's listed on her phone under Sensei, and I'm like, oh, Bakudo's obviously gonna save her. So immediately, there's no tension put into this plot whatsoever. None. There's no tension here. Any sort of tension that could have been here with Colleen possibly dying or something like that is completely thrown out the window, because you know Bakudo is gonna come to save her. So Danny calls a number, he gets a voicemail, explains what's happening. Davos then makes throwing stars, he tosses them into the wall about, above the now conscious cook. A guard leaves Rand talking on the radio about how Danny is at the dojo. I didn't understand what the point of any of this was, but Harold then tells Ward that he'll do anything he asks. Ward tells him to just leave him alone. So I don't know why you walked in the penthouse. I just, he, his father agrees but hopes that Joy will be more forgiving. He tells Ward he doesn't have any other option but to bring Joy into it and that he has something that will put an end to the hand. So Ward then hesitates. Harold tells him to leave if he wants to leave. And after a moment, Ward then walks out. So. It seems that this whole Ward Harold thing that's supposed to be going on, you know, with Harold kind of um, influencing Ward to do all this stuff, isn't happening now. But I, I just don't really understand this. Like the whole season, we've had Harold kind of been manipulating Ward and Ward kind of going along with it. I don't know why suddenly now Harold's just okay with Ward leaving. Like what? What did Ward? 
give him then that he's not giving him now. I just don't really understand it. But, and again, it's just, it's because of how underwritten things really are. But Danny tells Colleen they're going to be okay. Gao just chuckles. The lights go out. And, I mean, you, you know they're going to be okay. So, again, there's no stakes here. There's no tension. Gao tells Danny that his time is up. His friends are going to die because of him, which you know they're not going to because you know Bakudo's on the way. And someone tries to insert an optic camera in under the door. Colleen smashes it. The attackers then t toss a gas grenade in through the window. They drop it through the ceiling, and Danny, Claire, and Colleen take the men out. They realize that they're military. Gao tells Danny that uh, Colleen doesn't have much longer to live, and if he escorts Gao to her people, then she'll grant Colleen safe path. Then she'll grant Claire safe passage to help Colleen. So again. You know nothing bad's gonna happen here. You know Colleen's not gonna die. It just doesn't do anything. So Ward then meets with Yang. He tells him to name his price for providing a way to kill Ward. And Yang tells him about a legend of a shepherd who the Hand gave the same ability to. Eventually, a shepherd killed two of his own children and the resurrected to destroy those closest to them first. Yang tells Ward the only solution is to run. Ward then walks out and puts on a heroin patch. So I'm guessing now Ward is the main villain here. I don't know. We got three villains here. And none of them really seem to be making sense. So we then get probably the dumbest scene in this entire episode. Like I said, this episode is really dumb. But this scene really takes the cake and really just shows how far down the rabbit hole the show has gone. We see the character of Kyle who really hasn't done much of anything. He's just kind of been Harold's assistant. He's preparing to leave for the day. Harold calls him to the table where he's laid out ice cream. He says that they should celebrate and Kyle asks for vanilla. So offended... Harold says he went to a lot of trouble to get all the other flavors, and uh, literally because of the fact that Kyle just wanted vanilla, he grabs an ice cream scoop and then proceeds to beat Kyle's head. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Harold literally kills Kyle with an ice cream cone. Yeah, that's how far down the rabbit hole we've gone here. I, I know, it's ridiculous. I can't believe I'm actually saying this, but Harold kills him with an ice cream cone. This sounds like something on the sci-fi channel, but for some reason he goes with the ice cream cone he says he's been where kyle is going and it's not so bad he realizes what he's done lies on the floor next to kyle's corpse and what is the point of this like are we supposed to see that harold just mercilessly kills people are we supposed to see that he's careless because here's the thing on one hand you got harold saying he's sorry to ward and it seems like all right the guy feels bad for what he does but then you go and retcon that by him killing someone as innocent as kyle just because he didn't have the right flavor ice cream, like, it's, it just makes no sense whatsoever, no logical sense, nothing about this, um, makes any sort of sense, and it's just really dumb, it really is, again, this sounds like a parody, it does not sound like something you'd see in an actual Marvel TV show, it sounds like something in a spoof movie, it really does, he killed someone with an ice cream cone, it seems like something out of a B movie, I can't believe I'm actually saying this, but I, I the show really has gone this far, and it's just absolutely ridiculous where the show has gone, luckily this is the most ridiculous scene in the episode, but this really just, this, this took the cake and told me, oh yeah, this episode is absolute shit, which it really does not get better from here. So Ward goes to his car. He finds two policemen searching his car. They show him the heroin packets, and Ward says he's been set up. The officers tell him that the packets were on the seat and arrest him. I have no, I don't care about this at all. They take him to a mental hospital, which he should have gone for episodes ago, and Ward tells Edmonds that Harold is drugs planted on his car. He figures if he starts talking to Harold, then Edmonds will say that Harold had been dead for 13 years. So yeah, we realize that Harold was basically just playing him the entire time. Ward offers to take Edmonds to Harold, but Edmonds says that Ward is a drug addict with psychological problems, and they have to proceed carefully. So again, I have no idea where this is going. It makes no sense whatsoever, but that's just the nature of the beast here. Harold's in his office watching Edmonds and Ward talk. Joy enters the building. Harold sees her on the CCTVs. He sends the elevator to bring her up. She enters the apartment and Harold then greets Joy, apologize for her seeing him in a casket, which is just such amazing dialogue again. He hugs her, she breaks into tears, and if he really is going to use Joy the way he was going to use Ward, I have lost all faith in this plotline. I mean, I never really cared too much about it, but I thought it had some potential. But if Joy's just going to take the place of Ward, I don't understand the point of this at all. I mean, again, 
what did Ward give Harold that he didn't give him? Now, I get it The Ward has betrayed him. I get it The Ward almost, you know, killed him, but apparently he didn't kill him, and now he's going after Ward. I just don't really understand it, because Ward's going after Danny, the person that, obviously, Harold wants alive. I understand that, but why is he now using Joy? What is he going to get out of Joy that he didn't get out of Ward? I just don't really get it, but... Gal then tells Danny and Claire that once the poison reaches Colleen's brain, she's dead, which again, you know she's not going to, and in a very shocking turn of events, Bakudo arrives, definitely didn't see that coming at all, he says he's taking care of Gal's mercenaries, tells them to look out the window, one mercenary falls down his line, Gal tells Bakudo that he should leave, Danny lets Bakudo in, he tells Danny to heal Colleen using the Iron Fist, so suddenly Danny's able to use it, Gal tells Danny he's about to fall into a trap he cannot escape, Bakudo says that Danny wasn't talking what to do. He instructs him how to, in how to use the Iron Fist to burn the poison out of Colleen, and Danny does so. Claire confirms that Colleen is okay. Danny collapses from the effort. Bakudo then carries Danny out to his SUV. His men take Gao and put her in, and Colleen tells Claire that they're helping Danny, and Bakudo says that that's where they're going. Claire, for some reason, isn't allowed, which, you know, why not? Why not just not have her be allowed? But with that, they drive off. Davos watches from across the street, now knowing where Danny is, and that is how this ridiculous episode comes to an end. But let's just get in this and where is it going to take us because, oh my god. So, like I said, I'm going to give this episode the benefit of the doubt because here's the thing. Um, I do think there's some stuff in here that could potentially work for this episode, but... There are two things that really do hold this episode from making any logical sense whatsoever. One, just like all the other episodes, it's incredibly rushed. It really is. And I get it that the first, like, four or five episodes are really slow, but this is incredibly rushed. I mean, the, the idea that Harold would suddenly be alive, okay, I, I think we did kind of see that coming, but... It makes his entire death feel so pointless. It really does. I mean, nothing about this makes you like, oh yeah, Harold absolutely had to die. We needed to see Ward go through this trauma of him killing his father, even though he wanted to do it anyway. Um, and now, Harold, you know, it seems like he's forgiving towards Ward, but then, oh no, he's not. He's gonna turn on him. He's gonna actually ally with Joy for some reason, which... I didn't understand that at all. He told Ward he wanted to keep Joy out of it. Why is he okay with Joy now knowing that he's alive? I just don't understand it. I get it that obviously he needs someone to partner up with, but why does he need Joy? He didn't want Joy involved with this in the first place. I mean, just none of this makes any sense whatsoever. Um, and don't even get me started about the ice cream cone scene. I'd like to frankly pretend that never happened, but it did. I don't know what the point of that scene was, if it was to show how merciless of a villain Harold is. Um, but here's the thing about Harold. Immediately, this holds him back from the other villains, because at least Fisk, um, you know, Kilgrave, and, uh you know, Conmouth, they had moral grounds. They really did. They had compelling backstories. I mean, there were times in Daredevil where you really were on Fisk's side. You're like, all right, yeah, I can see where he's coming from there. There were times you were like that with uh, Conmouth. You could really see where he was coming from. Kilgrave, not so much. Kilgrave was kind of this, you know, really um, evil, just, he was a psychopath. He really was. There's no other way to interpret it. Kilgrave was a psychopath. He raped Jessica, as we know, and, uh, you know, that's a completely different story. Harold, on the other hand, uh, it just doesn't make any sense. But what also doesn't make any sense is how convoluted things really are here, because you got Harold, and obviously he's trying to go after Ward, but then Ward's going after Danny, and then you have Gao, and I just don't get how this all links together. It just feels so convoluted in this way. It feels like it's so confused as to what the direction of the show actually is. It seems like Gao is the main villain, but now, no, it seems that Ward is actually going to be our main villain. That Ward is actually going after Danny, and uh, he wants to take Danny out, which you know is not going to happen. There's no way Ward's actually going to kill Danny Rand. There's just no possible way whatsoever. And now he's in a mental institution where, okay, he should have been there, like, episodes ago. I mean... I just don't get where the show is going. It's all over the place. It makes no sense whatsoever. And then you go to the whole thing with Danny, Claire, and Colleen. Again, I like their team up, but 
you can't look me in the eye and tell me that you didn't know Colleen was going to be saved. I mean, the second that she said, I have a sensei, call him up, that basically deludes any tension from the story whatsoever. You know Colleen's going to be fine. You know that Bakudo's going to save her. What is the point of this storyline going on? I mean, I just didn't understand any of this. Uh, I get it that Bakudo saved them. How he's able to get Dane to suddenly summon the Iron Fist, I have no idea, but he just did. The show didn't explain it, and now Claire's no longer able to um, go on this venture with them. I didn't understand that either. Just in general, there were so many things in this episode that made no sense whatsoever. There were so many scenes that I should have, that were, I was laughing at that I shouldn't have been. Harold talking to himself. I mean, uh, Harold, you know, going to that hot dog vendor and just sticking his hand in the hot water was hilarious. Um, him spitting out mud. Um, you know, him, any scene with Harold really in this episode was absolutely hilarious. And then the fucking ice cream cone just takes the cake. I mean, that's just ridiculous stuff right there. I have no idea what that's supposed to mean. And it just takes the show in a much more silly direction than it should be. And the fact that this is a Marvel show... It's just disgraceful. It really is. I mean, we've had okay episodes of Luke Cage. That second half of Luke Cage, yeah, it was rough. But it still was a watchable show. And yes, there were things that Dimebag said that were a bit laughable, but it still was watchable. It still was something where I understood where these characters were coming from. The first half was so good that those characters I cared about, I still really did care about. This show, on the other hand, is just so confused. It doesn't know what these characters are. Joy, for example, one second you have her, she's on Danny's side, and now she's not on his side. She's just flip-flopping the entire time, and I'm sick of it. I, I don't want to see any more of Joy on Danny's side, not on Danny's side. Just make a damn decision already. Pick whose side you want to be on and move on. It's just really ridiculous that the show is still doing this stuff. It's really petty. It just seems like the show isn't really concerned about creating a logical narrative. Logic is not really something that applies to this show. Maybe the next few episodes will be better, but this episode just took things in a completely ridiculous direction that we didn't need at all. Guys, I really dislike this episode. This is without a doubt the worst episode I've seen of Iron Fist, maybe the worst episode I've seen of any of these Netflix Marvel shows, and I am without a doubt going to give Iron Fist Season 1, Episode 9, The Mistress of All Agonies, a D+, plus, seem, basically only because of a few scenes between Claire and Madame Gao that I did enjoy. I did enjoy hearing Madame Gao reveal some of her stuff to Danny, but again, with that, why didn't we get to hear, you know, why, why we get to hear it? I want to see this stuff. The show just doesn't understand how to create a compelling narrative, and I don't know if it's ever going to. I'm hoping the next few episodes really do take things in this really great direction because at this point, I'm at the point where I want to stop watching the show. I'm not going to stop watching the show, but it's gone in this completely cartoony direction and I don't know if the show is going to be able to pick itself up after that. Well, bro, guys, it's in my review this episode of Iron Fist. Let me know what you guys thought of this episode overall. Loved your thoughts on it. Again, I don't know how this episode came about. I really don't. This show was already silly enough to begin with, but this just took things on a whole other level, and again, maybe the next few episodes are better. Maybe they are. I've heard episode 10 is one of the stronger episodes of the season, so maybe it actually will be good, but I really just want the show to get out of this, uh, you know, potential, and then really dumb. Potential, really dumb. It's like back and forth. I just want the show to be consistent, and it's not at all, and this episode especially pretty much just shows how inconsistent the show is, but that's a my review. Hope you guys enjoy it. We'll see, we'll see you guys in the next video, which I guess will be for episode 10. Might as well watch it. You know, Defenders comes out Friday, and I gotta get these out as quickly as possible, but that's it for my review. Hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you guys thought of uh, this episode, and I will see you guys uh, for that. Okay, bye.